In this episode of Mighty Car Mods, it's all about a big brake conversion onto our new hubs and some shiny new wheels. Welcome to another episode of Mighty Car Mods. Last time we put the six speed conversion in, that means big strong gearbox, bigger shafts, bigger hubs. I've actually got a different stud pattern now, so I need new wheels. I've found some and got them painted up and they're looking amazing, we're gonna see them soon. We're also gonna throw on a big brake conversion as well while I'm here. Um, we need to fill it full of fluids, do a couple of other jobs like that. I've got my friend Benny, AKA Mechanical Stig here to help me, and we're gonna get into it. The later model STI that my gearbox and driveline came from also sports some fancy big Brembo brakes. These were a popular upgrade because they have good stopping power, big rotors and are easy to find pads for. Before they go on the car I'm going to clean them up just enough to keep the internet happy but not enough so they look unused and uncool on the street. This is Benny, Hi. aka Mechanical Stig. Um, thanks for coming and helping me again Benny. No worries. I had mad fun doing that six speed swap, that was good. How good are two doors? They're awesome. I, and miss, we, I miss my two dollars. We smashed that six speed swap out quick. I was very happily surprised with how long that took. Yeah, we, we sort of originally said, oh, maybe it'll take two days, and we were like done by Smoko. All the things that normally go wrong didn't go wrong. <laughs> yeah. The clutch went straight in. There yep. was no rusted bolts. We didn't strip the bottom That's star great. bolt. Yeah. Like there's all these little things that could have slowed us down every time. And didn't. And didn't. Now the good news is along with that six speed swap I also managed to nab a set of Brembo brakes. Now these are the matching brakes that came on the wreck that this is all out of. And grab these because these are bolt on. What, what can you tell us about these? They're the just the off the shelf Brembo. Very similar to an Evo one actually. So same pad availability. So yep. super easy to get all sorts of pads for. Yeah. Um, the front calipers are more or less the same from 2002 to about 2018. Right. I think 2019 they started to go six pot. Yep. And these um, are four pots. These hey? are the four pot. Four yeah, pistons so in there. Four piston and about three 328 mil disc. Yep. They fit on a, some 17s. Yep. Um, the thing people get caught out with is the spoke clearance to the the, um, oh, right. the outer edge of the caliper. It hits that. Yeah. That so I see a lot of people on the net go, "What offset clears Brembos?" Yeah. The short answer is offset's not relevant to the caliper, it's actually the spoke design. Yes, got it. Um, so the good news is because we put the hubs in from the later model STI, these just bolt straight on. For all these brakes, no, they're still on an 06 STI, I mean, even though they're not. And the rears, same kind of deal? Yeah, so the fronts will actually, would have actually bolted to the car in 5 100. Oh, cool. But the rears won't because they've got a different bolt spacing. Yep. And these are different size disc. And the yep. handbrake is actually different on this. It's 190 mil, whereas the WX and this STI yep. had 170 mil handbrake. Yep. So these are a popular upgrade. Um, yes, there are any certain wheels that clear it. Yes, I have managed to find some also with the help of Benny. Um, well, you're going to see them later because that's pretty exciting. So stoked with them. They're not um, standard wheels. They're not standard wheels. So these, uh, we're now just going to give a little clean up and um, I've got some fresh pads and rotors to go on as well. Give them a clean up, throw them in the car. If your secondhand brakes are in good condition, you can throw them on, bleed the fluid and be on your way. Mine are a bit chewed out, so it's the perfect time to put on some new pads and rotors and a perfect opportunity to upgrade both. I'm installing some slotted rotors and pads made for street and light track duties. Exactly the purpose of this car. A lot of the time when you buy these parts, they are transported without wheels on them and the brakes just sort of sit there. Sometimes even if they've got no brakes, these shields on the back get bent. It's always worth checking them because what otherwise happens is you pull your brakes back together and as soon as you start driving the car, it screeches like crazy and then you've got to jack it up and everything's got to come off again. So just eyeball it and just check that nothing's actually rubbing. These, these are the correct shields Benny was saying for these brakes, so they shouldn't rub and if they do, it's because they've been smashed. I can see a few spots where they've been hit. Quite aware that I'm actually reducing the purity of the STI. By adding STI parts to the STI, I am affecting its purity because it's no longer pure, but it's got big brakes, it's going to be better at stopping, it's going to be better on the track, it's going to be better for the enjoyment. And is purity and enjoyment two sides of the same scale? Sometimes. In this case it very much is. I'm pushing this towards max enjoyment with this STI. 
Just want to do all the mods to make it awesome. The biggest shift on the Purity Seesaw happens when you make a change that's not reversible. It's no secret that modified cars often sell for the same or even less than a stock equivalent. People want to mod their own way and this is mine. Totally reversible, but putting the best parts I can get my hands on and choosing them based on my own experience and the knowledge of those I consider to be experts at what they do. One thing is for sure, and that is these brakes will take much more abuse than a stock set would, particularly when we start to increase how much power this little two-door Subaru puts down to the wheels. Calipers and rotors are on, they're looking awesome. Got the brake lines mocked up. You may have noticed that something is missing from here. You may be shocked to find out that there is a strut missing uh, that needs to be put in there. Now, they are a little bit different from 06 SCI and 99 SCI are slightly different. Benny's got a cool idea of how we might be able to address that without having to go full custom and without having to go coilovers. Um, I don't want to go coilovers. I may one day, I just don't want to yet. I want to enjoy it as it is because I really like how the car rides. Uh, so we're going to address that, but first we're going to put some pads into this and then once we've got some shocks and everything back together We'll start bleeding the fluids and then it's car back together wheels on Still going to see the wheels soon and an exhaust as well Brembo is an Italian brand that was started in the early 1960s They're supplied on lots of standard factory cars, but have also been used in F1, MotoGP And it's hard to go to any racetrack without seeing at least one set somewhere They've also been one of the hardest hit when it comes to fakes the market is flooded with not quite right imitations, so if you're chasing a set of these, make sure you check to see if they're genuine, and if you're buying pads, get them from a reputable seller. Yeah, Benny. Yeah, Benny. They're in. Two door things. We've got pads front and back. Calipers, rotors, front and back. We just need some shocks and some exhaust. I'm excited. And we're good. The shocks are going to be the hardest part. part. Nah, no, it'll be easy. Okay, hopefully. <laughs> this is the brand new KYB XL G uh, shock absorber that we put into our GM8 two door WRX SDRG. That's a mouthful. Mm. Um, recently, which work really well. They ride really well. Super happy with them. They're really happy with the height as well. Um, it's just a basic sort of lowered um, spring and shock combo. Now, because we have changed the hubs, the spacing here and the spacing on, could you present that please, Benny? There is different. different. Uh, and also the width is different too, this way. Um, so the problem is we can't actually use these shocks directly on these hubs. Now, there might be a way that we're going to be able to make it happen, which is... Kind of. We, we don't know yet, so we're taking you along for the ride. We can't use the original two-door shocks on the new hubs because they're fatter and the bolt spacing is different. The newer shock is also shorter, meaning the car would sit lower to the ground if we threw it in as is. But with a little bit of mixing and matching parts, we should be able to sort it out. A few people noted in our episode where we put this suspension together that we actually put the bump stop in backwards, and we did. Um, I hadn't really seen one like this before, but the boot actually cable ties around that part. And also, some keen-eyed people said, your riding's upside down on your spring. Now, usually the riding's the right way up, but it has to just fit right. And in this case, that is in the correct spot that way. And you can see because the top actually has like a flattened section and that will not fit this way. So in this case, riding upside down. There you go. We need to use the newer model shock with the older model spring. We're gonna do some measurements and work out exactly where everything needs to be to make it work. We've 
worked out there's a 31 mm difference in height, but to be sure we're checking extended height, compressed height and rebound. This is the replacement shot for the GC8 that we put in. This is the one out of the 06 STI. We need the bottom bit to be this size and shape to fit the drive line that we've just put in and the hubs, but we also need the height to be the same. Otherwise, this shot wants to sit there and drops the height, overall height of the front of our car by 25 to 50 mil, which is not cool. So what we've had to do is machine a spacer that moves the internals of this shock into the correct position so that we can use the spring from the GC8 Use the top hat from the GC8, it'll fit the bottom hub, it'll fit the car at the top, and it'll all work. This process is a little bit like moving your spring seat up and down on your coilover suspension. Our inverted monotube strut has a sleeve bush in it that helps hold everything in place. We've worked out that the shock is still within a functional range of motion where these work as intended. But this is a bit of a hack, so do your research before you start chopping up your struts. And if you want to save time and have a mad slammed ride, just buy adjustable coilovers. We can now refit the early model spring, spring seat and top hats and install them back into the car and bolt up our hubs. The old exhaust that came with the car wouldn't clear the new gearbox, so I've got myself a shiny new one which has just arrived. Alright, so this here is a turbo back exhaust for Martin's WRX. Yeah. Very exciting times. Yeah. And we've had good experience fitting these in the past because they fit. We have. They in just our seem experience, to, they just which seem is good. good. It's a nice um it's a nice stainless system. It's got a fairly big muffler on the back, which I like because it'll still flow well, but it won't be ridiculously noisy. That is a huge muffler, Martin. It's good. And that's kind of got like a rolled tip on it, right? I think so, yeah. Yeah, it does. It's just like a neat single muffler looking thing. I don't want a cannon because they're just they're just loud and obnoxious. That's the center pipe. Awesome. Um, the difference is the front pipe, the dump. So the back section, like this exhaust suits a later model um, Subaru. So we just have Trash to mess joint. around with the one of the mounts because it's not actually meant to be on this car, but there's not enough difference that it's, you know, a huge job to fit it. Yep, cool. So we just fit the bits that fit, mod the bits that don't, and get it on the car. Now, Martin, is this part go. actually going to fit the turbo, do you reckon? That will. Do you reckon it will, though? I reckon it will. I reckon we should find out. Yeah. For sure. I'm pretty excited. Throw um, it on. Once this is on, Martin, we also got to pick up the wheels later on, which you dropped off. Yes. To be painted. Yep. Trong's doing them. Yep. Uh, so we've got to pick those up. So exhaust is going to go on. Wheels are going to go on. Fluids. And then is it, are we actually going to be finished today? I think so. Well, if all the fluids going and nothing leaks out of it, then it's ready to drive again. We haven't changed enough that it won't just start and run. Amazing. All right. Let's exhaust it. Then we'll wheel it. Then we'll go for a drive. This exhaust is turbo back, has a high flow cat, a centre resonator and a nice big fat neighbour friendly muffler. If you don't like your neighbours, you can always remove it. First we need to lube up the exhaust hangers and then we can fit it up to the car. is up in the air, I'm going to change out the diff oil. The oil that's in it already may be fine, but for a few bucks worth of oil, it's not worth the risk leaving it in. I'll be replacing it with a synthetic diff oil designed specifically for limited slip applications. The exhaust fits really well, so next we're going to drain both the gearbox and the engine oil. The six-speed has two drain points, a small sump plug as well as the usual big 21mm drain. The gear oil actually looks pretty good, but the engine oil has had enough track action and is dirty enough to require a change. The sump plugs can then go back in along with a new filter and we can refill everything else from above. Brake lines are looking good, engine oil is out. Gearbox oil has been drained, diff oil has been completely replaced and the exhaust is in. 
The exhaust bolted on. Looks great. Just like it said on the box. You know what's crazy? It's not even meant for this car. And Isn't it bolted it? on. <laughs> so we're going to drop it down and we're going to add some fluids, um, bleed the brakes and throw the wheels on and then it's good to drive. That's it. Can't wait to see the wheels. Yeah. Excellent. All right, let's do it. The gearbox oil is filled via the dipstick hole using a funnel. Benny is adapting the later model ABS sensors to work with the older car so we can then move on to the brakes. I'm going to suck out as much fluid as I can using a giant syringe thingo and then a filler bottle can be attached to the brake master cylinder. Much like a funnel bucket for doing coolant, this helps keep extra fluid available so you don't suck it dry when you're pumping the pedal. And with the pedal being pumped by someone who is keen for some extra leg definition, the bleed nipples on the calipers can be cracked and fluid bled through the entire braking system. Next, using the same bottle, but this time taped to the windscreen for extra support, we're going to bleed the clutch. Often, just cracking the bleed nipple on the slave cylinder and letting gravity do its thing will get you most of the way there. But otherwise, it's the same process as the brakes. The CV axle nuts are staked, the engine bay is back together, and finally I can attach my seven-speed gear knob. All the top of the engine is back together, we put fluids in everything. Uh, so now I'm going to start it back up, make sure everything works and runs. Then I'm going to throw the wheels on and drive it. The car starts, runs and nothing is making bad noises. But my old wheels won't fit, so I need to sort out some new ones. I'm going to go down and see Mark at Bower Brothers and see if you can sort out these wheels for me. My friend Mark runs a wheel restoration shop. He helped build some amazing wheels for the mirror and he's got a dank tank. I saw them. Everyone saw <laughs> I them. I mean, they're dirty. No, nah, they're fantastic. What are these for? These oh, are for the WR slash STI. Yeah. Yeah. That'll work. So 5 by 114.5, really light, a little bit of lip and they clear Brembos and you can't go crazy with tyres on those cars. They just don't fit. Yeah, and these are reasonably good. Benny found these, of course, because he's the whisperer, wheel whisperer. Wheel whisperer. Um, but they just need the tyres off and just to be dunked in your magical vat Don't of wheel fixing. <laughs> Mark, how does the dank tank work? Uh, it basically melts the paint off. It's got magical paint stripper it's in there. Got magical paint stripper. And does paint it work? Stripper. Have you got some examples of how it works? Before, after. You know what's missing, don't you? Well, where's oh, your, yeah. Where's I'm your, just going to get my pointer. I think you should. Before, Off already. There's nothing on that bottom lip. Wow, look at that, man. Yeah, quite a different too. Almost brand new, huh? Yeah. That's awesome, thanks. Mm -hmm. Still a few tricky spots to get, but that's yeah, right. This fits on, look at that. Ooh. Hang on, seven, seven, huh? Seven kilos. Well, plus it's an SSR, it's really nice and strong. Well, you guys are backed up with weeks with work, so I'm going to take these to Trong to go and get them painted. He did the car, so I feel like it's the right thing to do. Yeah. That he gets to do the wheels too. Don't go pink. Put them pink? Okay, I'll take that advice on board. <laughs> no, I will not. Love it. Next time we see these, they're going to look amazing. <laughs> what a legend, he's back. Oh, he sprayed out some colours. What do you think? Let's hold him up there. I'll grab the Prepsol. Oh, it's pretty good. Oh, yeah, Prepsol to get the, uh, get the gloss, huh? Yeah. Yeah, it looks pretty good. So that's... Um, it's always hard to tell on camera, but... Fiat. Fiat um, Marin Volcano. Oh, right. It's so, a Fiat colour for the actual body of the car. Yeah, that's it. Well, 
I'll leave these with you. Yeah, sweet. And yeah, let you do your thing. They're, yeah. they're all like prepped and should just need a quick rub down and some primer and then you'll be good to go, man. Right, no. I can't wait to see this car with like wheels finished on it, eh? Sweet. It's gonna be mad. Thanks, Tron. No worries, mate. So Marty just dropped these off and he wants to get them painted in a bronze color. So what I've done is I've used the degreaser, cleaned the wheels down with a scotch bright just to break up anything that's stuck on the surface. Um, we're going to spray some edge primer down, let that bite into the alloy so that gives it a good bond. And then let that flash off, give it about two coats of wet and wet primer, let that skin eggshell and then we'll whack it with colour and then clear. You want to be very extra careful because wheels, they contain a lot of oils and greases, especially second-hand wheels. So we want them to last long in the car. Sort of, I like to keep everything thin as possible. So the thicker it is, the easier it can crack, blister, crow's feet and fall off. So everything's just nice and thin. We're going for the Fiat colour. It's called Marin Volcano and that's when they paint the Volks, they try to match it to that colour, but it's uh, less anodized, So it's more of a grainy, metallic -y finish. So degreaser, edge primer, wet or wet primer, and then colour, and then clear. Now that Trung has worked his magic, all that's required is a set of sticky tyres to be fitted up, and the wheels are ready to go back on the car. You haven't seen the wheels yet, have you? Not in the flesh. I've seen, I've seen a photo, and I, what I saw in the photo was very exciting. But I've I have got not seen them, Martin. Flesh. I picked them up, let me get you one. How did you fit them in the BRZ? That's what BRZs do, man. Wheel, I think a ute would probably be better for that job. A what? A ute. No, BRZs can carry wheels around, and that's what they're for, man. Oh, yeah, Are you dude. ready? Oh, yeah, dude. Are you ready? Yeah, man. <laughs> look at that. How good does that look? Excellent. So good. And they'll fit, which is the best kind of wheel. So good. And wrapped, Martin, in some Michelin Pilot Sport 4 for the extra grippiness Excellent. at the track so I can smoke you in my BRZ. Yeah, you might. We'll see. Yes. On they go. Please clear the Brembos, like we checked. Oh, look at that. Made for it. It's quite hard to find wheels that will both clear Brembos and be the right stud pattern and not clash on stuff. And you can put big tyres on. Like, there's a bit of a juggle to tick all those boxes, but they seem to be doing that. These are forged SSR Type C wheels. The C stands for competition, which makes sense as these were some of the lightest approved wheels in the world when they first came out. They're a commonly copied wheel and like the brakes, there are plenty of imitations. Most importantly for me, they're strong, light and fit perfectly. The fractured wheel nuts are just sort of chewing the paint a bit. They're probably doing an okay job of holding the wheels on, but um, I can get some aftermarket ones that have sort of a fatter seat on them and they seem to fit a little bit nicer so I'm going to throw them on. The height Benny! The height Benny! No, you nailed it bro, look at it. That's great. That looks awesome. Still high, yeah, it will be for a minute. <laughs> My new clutch works real good. Bloopers! Hey, 